Hey YouTube, it's your girl Stacey Stace here and today I'm going to be doing things a little bit different. I'll be showing you guys a day in my life as an EMT. Okay, so before we get started, just want to give you guys some background information. I've been a part-time EMT for over a year now, and I work for EMS. I pick up night shift for 12 hours long. They do typically run overtime sometimes, especially since we've been having a shortage. And since we're in the middle of a pandemic, it kind of gets crazy. But I will be bringing you guys along with me tonight. Of course, I won't be able to bring my camera with me everywhere, I, everywhere that I go. But I will try to insert like mini clips or scenarios that are already pre-recorded so I can give you guys a proper depiction of what I do. So I hope this is able to answer some of you guys' questions. I know when I was looking forward towards becoming an EMT, I had no clue what to really expect. So yeah, um, if you do have any further questions, feel free to reach out Hello. to me. But without further ado, let's get right into this video. All right, so here's a few things that I like to carry along with me, starting with my stethoscope for obvious reasons like obtaining blood pressure, listening to lung sounds, and things of that nature. Then we have our trauma shears, very important for trauma calls, especially when there's underlying injuries and you need to remove any tight clothing that are in the way. Next, we have our Sharpies and pens, very important for jotting down patient, ex patient information while you're on scene. I like to carry a little notepad with me. These are literally like only a dollar at your local pharmacy store or Dollar Tree. Um, since I work at night, it's typical for me to carry a flashlight because sometimes it's hard to see where you are, especially when you're looking for certain things or maybe if you need a closer look at uh, where the patient could be bleeding from. Uh, we have our pen light, very important for like overdose calls, stroke, you wanna measure the pupil size and notify the hospital as well. Also, you can't go anywhere without wearing a mask since we are in the middle of a pandemic. All right, so some nights it's very busy. We get back-to-back -back calls and there's literally just no time to even take a breath. But then we have calls where we get little to no calls. So it's just important to have items with you just in case to help you kill time, like getting some work done. I like to bring my laptop, that way I can edit videos or watch Netflix. I do carry a bag of masks with me, um, medication. Also, it's very important to have some snacks. I love my hot chocolate and it's getting colder, so it's only right. But um, other than that, I have like my neck vest if I need to take a nap, my traffic vest so I can easily grab it um, during any calls like a traffic accident. Um, there's my backpack, I like to bring my charger, my AirPods, any books for me to study, and that's pretty much it. Alright y'all, it's time to hit the road. Hey y'all, I am currently vlogging from my iPhone, sorry if there's like a change of quality. But yeah, I'm um, just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of what to expect once I get into work. Um, there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> but yeah, um, once I get to work, oh my gosh, I think that's my coworker. I just saw one of our trucks. Dang, they're busy already. See, that's what I'm about to get into. I uh, just want to give you guys a quick rundown on what to expect once I get to work. As soon as I get inside, I have to get my temperature checked, and then I clock in, and then I go to the daily roster just to see what truck I'm assigned to. Once I get that out of the way, I will head to the bay, garage, whatever you want to call it, find my truck, and check it off just to make sure it's fully stocked. Typically, you don't want to spend more than 15 minutes checking off the truck, and you shouldn't have to anyways, especially since the crew before you should already have it clean and stocked before they clock down. So on the next clip, I'm gonna show like a more detailed look of the ambulance and the things to check off. I will see you guys on the next video. So here's a mini tour of our ambulance. This is what you walk into. First thing you'll see is our stretcher. Then we have our jump bag, which we bring on every call. 
and our oxygen tank which is strapped up to the stretcher if that goes empty we have two additional spares over there and not every truck looks the same but this is one of our newer models we have little compartments everywhere this is kind of like where we have our ppes and stuff if we have any covid calls related calls we call this our airway cabinet which consists of like nasal cannula non-rebreathers cpap cardiac monitor we have our AEDs on this portion and we have our electrodes which we put on our leads temperature we have our IV cabinet we have our trauma cabinet here we have our sheets and blankets and whatnot some gloves that's for our cardio portion. Our pediatric bag will be in this compartment. That's where we have the necessities needed for any pediatric cause. And this is like a cool little feature. We can control the lighting. Nice. Here we have where I put our sharp container. We are good. Okay. This is where we put our sharp containers. Matter of fact, there should be another one, so I have to grab that from the stock room. Then we have our airway bag, our med bag, our IV bag, and our IO bag, and then we have this bag valve mat. So I'm about to just check all this off and make sure everything is fully stocked. And I'm gonna also show you guys our supply room, which is that door right there. All right, so for the med bag, just wanna make sure we have the right amount of every medications. We have our chest pain medications. We have Epi, Narcan, Albuterol, things of that nature. For the IV bag, you wanna make sure you have your saline, your drop set, and two of each of the gauge needle sizes, as well as two start packs and two flushes. And of course, you gotta make sure you have uh, blood pressure cuffs, a small and large, pulse oximeter, stethoscope, and glucometer. And you want to also have nasal cannula and on the beaded mask as well. Also, don't forget to check the outdoor compartment of the ambulance as well. All right, here is our supply room. It's a whole lot, but it's kind of organized. Like this is generally the trauma section. We have our mask and more PPE stuff, which I'm gonna grab because I definitely need some of that. This is what we use to seal the cabinets, check glucose, blood pressure cuffs, AED, electrolytes. These are our airway compartment, and these are for like the IVs and stuff. Oxygen, and then we have our med cabinet. It's locked up. You have to ask the supervisor to unlock it for you. But that's generally how everything looks up. And this is where we place our cardism because it has to be refrigerated. So yeah, that's what we're working with. And I need to grab more of these in case we get a COVID call. We should have enough goggles. And I have a mask already, so we should be good. All right, about to head back to the truck. That's how we control the lights. Um, and patient cam is somewhere around here. There it is. So I'm done checking out the truck and we are about to grab our remaining items out of our car and then log online. So hopefully we don't get too many calls tonight. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we didn't log in yet, but this is where we'll log in. So after the truck checkoff is complete, we notify the dispatcher that our crew is online and available for a post, and pretty much they'll send us to an area in the county where we would typically respond to calls in that region. It's not always the case, but that's pretty much how it is. Our agency has different types of posting locations. For example, sometimes we park at the hospital, 
and they typically have snacks in the EMS lounge as you can see in this clip right here. We also tend to park at the nearest station as well. Here's a look at one of our fire stations in the county. I usually tend to chill inside of the truck, but sometimes I go inside to heat up food, get some work done, or maybe sit on the recliner chairs as well. Whenever we're dispatched to a high consequence pathogen call, for example, COVID-19, we would have to make sure that we completely gown up before assessing the patient. Hey. <laughs> All right, so before we get started, I just want to give a quick shout out to my girl Demola for being a huge help and pretending to be my patient for the next clip. So let's get right into it. All right, is it okay if I get some vitals on you? All right, let's take your blood pressure, okay? Mm. We're gonna place this on your finger to monitor your O2 levels. All right, right now you're at an eight. I'm gonna put you on some oxygen, okay? Okay, perfect. You're doing much better already. I'm gonna put this blood pressure cuff on your arm. Do you have any other medical history as well? Depression. Depression. Are you compliant with your medication? Sometimes. Sometimes. Which one did you take today? None. Are you allergic to anything? Mm-hmm. What's you allergic to? Latex. Latex? Okay. All right, we will be in the hospital in 10 minutes. We're gonna keep monitoring your vitals. I'm gonna check your blood sugar as well. Just a quick disclaimer, not all patient assessment will be the same. This is just a very vague example of me just checking her vitals and everything. But of course, depending on her chief complaint, you can do a focus assessment if you know the medical problem that's going on, like maybe asthma and she has some wheezing, so you'll, you can give albuterol. But if it's like a trauma assessment, you'll have to do like a full head to toe, make sure there's no underlying injuries and so and so. But once you have all the information, you make sure you jot that down because you are going to need it later on when it's time to fill in your report. You always want to also notify the hospital when you're about like 10 minutes away. Include the gender, the age, the chief complaint, vitals, any medications giving, if it's emergency or routine traffic, and things of that nature. My guest appearance on YouTube! Hey. Hey. So after you obtain the patient signature for transport, you'll get to the hospital and go to the charge nurse desk to get the patient registered and get assigned a room. Once you get to the room, you'll give the nurse the hospital report, pretty much the same as the radio report that you gave when you were on the way to the hospital. After the patient is transferred in their hospital room, the second partner will get a head start in cleaning off the stretcher and making sure the back is also fully stocked and clean. Ideally, you want to start your patient report um, as early as you can. Sometimes you can get away with finishing your report while in transport if it's a long ride to the hospital, but you definitely want to get it done as soon as possible after your call. Sometimes it's out of your control, especially when the call volume is super duper high like it's been lately. So, it's just pretty much how it goes. All right, it is time that you approach the end of your shift. You must always, always fill up for fuel before you head to base. And then you gotta restock the truck, make sure you replace anything that you use. It's easier just to carry a list with you, that way you're not going back and forth. And the reason why you wanna do this is so that the next crew that logs onto the truck can easily be able to log online without having to worry about restocking or cleaning up after the mess that you left. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you guys that tuned in into this video. I really appreciate you. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And tune in next time for my next video. Peace.